Mr. Jadav teaches computer science at Mamaronik High School. Yeah. Not equal to. <laughs> so it says if. His classrooms are decorated with these posters. However, they're much more than decoration. His students actually live up to what is written on them. Peter, Hector, oh, and Yi are the designers of a device um, guys, that has no name yet. Bit. They created it you for quarterbacks. Uh, the purpose? To change the way they practice for well, the game of football. Um, One day I was training on the football field over at uh, the high school, obviously, and um, I realized that there was no way for me to train my actual mind while playing football by myself. So I came to Mr. Jadav the next day and I asked him how difficult it would be to get together a team where we could develop something that can, instead of training only the physical aspects of being a quarterback, also the mental aspects. It is easy to take for granted what some of the best quarterbacks in the game of football do, whatever level they may be at. But as a quarterback from Mamaronik High School, Peter knows exactly how difficult the position is. When you're on the field, you need to know where to look. You need to know what your reads are, and you need to be able to make the reads in a short amount of time. So let's examine why quarterbacks need to make their reads in such a short amount of time. We'll rely on ESPN's sports science for the answer. Luis gets to Ben in just 1.3 seconds, but Ben needs 1.5 seconds to successfully move the ball that crucial 29 inches to get his pass off to move his arm from here to here. As Ben prepares to take the snap, Luis sets up 15 feet from center. On most pass plays, Luis has to clear six feet off the line of scrimmage to reach the pocket. If Luis gets past this obstacle unblocked, Big Ben gets his bell rock. That's a taste of the amount of pressure a quarterback is under after the ball is snapped making it especially important that he goes through his reads and hits the open target in the correct amount of time. So how does this device strengthen the probability that a quarterback will complete their pass to the open target before being sacked? How it works is you would set up the targets on the field as you need them on a play where the receivers would be found open. And these targets simulate a real game situation with weighted averages. So you would hang this target, this small target, on a pre-existing target, which are used only to train the physical aspects of being a quarterback. And you would take your drop and watch as the lights move from red to green. When you find a green light, that's when you throw. The important thing to remember is a quarterback has reads, so they look from one target to the next in a certain order. And that's what this is gonna help train. So the lights accordingly will light up based on information we gained from a book called um, The R4 System by Dub Maddox. It's important to train the internal clock. You have about 0.4 seconds to decide whether someone is open or not and look to the next target. Meet the brains in the operation, Yi so, Zhao. He is the programmer for this exactly device who receives the ideas uh, okay, and implements so, the codes. Uh, here you have the circuit chip, you have the hard drive, which is an SD card. You have the input-output cable, which uh, allows me to input commands onto the breadboard. And then you have USB cables, a wireless cable, and a Wi-Fi adapter. What makes this invention so unique? Unique enough to win InnoVention, an NYU competition challenging high school students to prototype and pitch commercially viable ideas to receive a $500 stipend. Currently, there's nothing existing for quarterbacks to do that alone. Um, Mr. Dodd's class has actually been very helpful because he teaches the fundamentals of programming. Um, Peter came in after school. I have a lot of students come in during their free time. So one day he came in after school, after football practice, and he said, Mr. Dow, I have this problem. When I'm training for this on the football field, I can only do so much by myself. The idea was originally from the student uh, who had a real problem. Can we do it? Sure. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to become a project. And it did become a project, not only for the team Mr. Jadav assembled, but for himself. He has taught math before. He's cracked open textbooks and handed out packets for homework. But just as his students have become innovators with their device, Mr. Jadav has become an innovator with his style of teaching. It becomes very much about standardized assessments. And it restricts the teacher on, on what they want to do. Rather than waiting for the system to change, I just changed what I taught. Um, and so having the flexibility of teaching these electives, I can actually design my courses 
teach the courses, made them project-based you know, to, to simulate what real-world experience would look like in a classroom. With their team assembled and their prototype ready, they headed to Innovention, looking to take their idea to the next level. When we got there and we saw all these other great projects, you know, that, that doubt in my mind came in, like, oh, we might not win this, we might not, especially with the wheelchair one. And so when we got the results back that we won, it was like, it was a sort of a special excitement that you get for winning. Going into the competition, we knew we were going to be a contender. We knew what we had was, was very unique. And so, obviously I was thrilled, but I wasn't too surprised. I knew we were going to do well. And, well, they did, receiving this email from the NYU Polytechnic School of Engineering, confirming their victory in the competition, something that, according to Mr. Jadav, was not the main goal. I mean, I don't think I have, I've ever experienced uh, anything like this. I mean, when we won, that was, that was never even sort of like the goal that let's win. Uh, we were doing this as, as a way to fulfill our own goal. However, winning did provide for Mr. Jadav and Peter an opportunity to go to NYU's Launchpad program at the Varick Incubator where they saw how other startups were just trying to make it in the industry and learned some valuable information in order to do the same. How to check for market viability, how to bring your product to market, calculating metrics. Further validating that this was not just a class assignment, it never was. We can start manufacturing these and bringing them to market, which would be really cool. So, you guys, are, you're serious about this. This, oh, this, yeah, is, not, this is not a school project. Absolutely. This is, this can go places. It's, there's nothing like it. The big picture? Well, Peter and his team can see this product being used in many different markets, and they've already begun targeting them. We're, um interviewing all these college coaches. Once we have the information that we need to see if this is something that they would want in the future, then once we have a full product, we can bring it back to them. I would love for this to become a class on its own, an entrepreneurship class. This is what the industry wants people to be trained in. So what's next for the QB device with no name? But we would have a program where you can drag and drop your receivers on your phone then you would set up the targets on the field where you have them on your phone. And eventually, a way for those targets to move without you physically moving them. And then it takes however long it takes for the robots to reset on the field, and then you run the play. Um, that will be the ultimate uh, finish to this project. <laughs> Peter, Hector, and Yi had an idea, and they ran with it. With the help of their teacher, Mr. Jadav, they now have a platform to continue developing their product. How's that for taking what you learn in the classroom and applying it to real life? Reporting from Amaranek High School, I'm Anthony Carlo.